Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's start June 18th, paper 62. Question number one, each of a group of 10 boys estimates the length of a piece of string. The estimates in centimeters are as follows. So we have to find the mode. And if you look at the second part, we have to find the uh, median and the interquartile range as well. So for that as well, we need to write this in an ascending order first of all, okay? So which one is the smallest value here? Is that 36? Yes, I think that is 36. Okay, so here we are. So putting that in an ascending order, 36. Then we have 37. Then we have 38. Okay, we have 38 twice here. 38, oh, this is three times, in fact. Hmm. So there are three times 38. Then we have 39. Okay. Then we have two 40s. Then we have 42. And eventually we have 45. We should count them again so that uh, just to make sure that none of them is missed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you, you can see that your mode is clearly 38. That is the most frequent observation. That is the mode over here. Okay. Then it says find the median. Now you have 10 values here. So 10 plus 1 over 2, that is going to be 5.5. So this is one, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So here is your median. So that is going to be between 38 and 39. So your median is going to be 38.5. Next, we'll find the interquartile range. If you have even set of data, um, then you see you can have this exactly divided into two parts. Hmm? The first five observations and the second. So this is your first half, okay? And this one is your second half. So you have the, me the median of these first five values will be your lower quartile, which is clearly this 38. There are five observations. So you have five plus one over two, that is gonna be three. So here, the, if you look at the last five values, so this is going to be, oh, so this is going to be, um, this is going to be your upper quartile. So the lower quartile is 38. The upper quartile is 40. Therefore, the interquartile range is going to be Q3 minus Q1. That is 40 minus 38, and that is equal to two. Okay, so this, this was your first question. I believe there shouldn't be any questions regarding this. So I'm moving into the second question. In a group of students, three by four are male. Okay, the proportion of male students who like their curry hot is three by five. And the proportion of female students who like their curry hot is four by five. One student is chosen at random. Okay, so it says find the probability that the student chosen is either female or likes their curry hot or is both. I think we should have a tree diagram for this right away. We should draw a tree diagram. I can see there's a second part as well. So I can just slide this up so that we can uh, do that person here as well. Okay, so um, let's draw the tree diagram. So we have first of all males and then females. This is three by four are males, then obviously quarter of them would be females. And then he says like, you know, they have to have their curry hot. So the males like the hot curry, that is going to be three by five. 
And the ones who are lungs like me, they can eat anything. They are two by five. And, okay. And then it says, uh, and the proportion of female students who like the, their curry hot is four by five. So this is going to be four by five. You see, males are so cool. They don't mind if it is hot or not. They just like, you know, eat anything you, you give them. So anyhow, just, just joking. So it says uh, <coughs> one student is chosen at random. Find the probability that the, the student chosen is either female. So that is going to be one by four. Okay, or likes the curry hot. So likes the curry hot is going to be uh, male and hot. Okay, female is already there, so I'm not going to add this. So this is going to be plus three by four times three by five. Or is both female and likes the curry hot? I think this should be the answer to this because there are so many overlapping. Look at this. It says uh, is either female. So this this part is for the female. Okay. So this includes that. Um, I mean, like say curry hot. So you know this hot female and hot and then male and hot. So I'm just adding male and hot. This female and hot is already there. Is both female and uh, likes their curry hot. So this is already there as well. So let's find the answer and then check if it is really correct. So this is going to be five plus nine, 14 by 20. That is going to be seven by 10. So let's check the answer. So we have uh, checked the answer. That is going to be seven by 10. You must have questions on it. Yeah, this was not an easy question to answer. Please ask me if there's any question. Better look at this. Uh, you are saying uh, that it is either, uh, the student chosen is either female, okay? So when I have taken female over here, so uh, then it says uh, female and likes a curry hot. So this is already there, female and hot. So why would you repeat that? Hmm? The females are already there. So obviously this includes the, the, those who like the curry hot or those who do not like the curry uh, hot. Okay? So if you repeat them, you see your answer might go beyond one if you keep them repeating again and again. Okay? So you have to be very careful that like, you know, if, if anything that has been added and you're going to repeat that. Okay. I wanted to give you an example over here. Let me think of an example first. Now, suppose we have a competition between A1 and A2 students. Okay. And like, you know, there is all A1s are there and all A2s are there. And let's say rather instead of having a competition, I want to choose a student uh, from, um, a1 and A2, okay? And then I say the student can be from A1, okay? Uh, it Or uh, A2 math student or A1 math student, okay? When I have already said that the student can be from A1, so it means all the math or non-math students are already included in that list. So uh, this thing becomes insignificant that, okay, or the student can be from A1 having maths, okay? So my set, possible set would be all the A1 students and then the A2 math students. That would be the list from which I can pick a student. Okay, if you go back to this situation here, he says, okay, we're going to choose one student and that student is going to be a female, okay? So we have like, you know, picked all the females, we have taken them on one side. So be it a female liking the curry hot or be the female not liking the curry hot, everyone is included here. So this thing, this condition here 
becomes insignificant both female and likes curry hot because this has already been chosen here okay now the ones who like the curry hot they can be male they can be female a female is already there so i will have to add this into so that you know all my requirement is completed so this becomes basically two sets one the who are males and who like the curry hot others are simply females that's it i hope i have answered this question now please tell me okay now we go to the second part it says uh showing your working determine whether the event student chosen is male and the student chosen likes a curry hot are independent okay so for this uh particular question you should have uh probability of male and hot if that is equal to probability of male and probability of this liking the hot curry if that is equal it would mean that they are going to be independent okay so male and hot that is going to be 9 by 20 and let's see if that is equal to probability of male is 3 by 4 and probability of hot is going to be 9 by 20 plus 4 by 20 so you see that this is clearly they are not equal this means that m and h are not independent they are dependent on each other okay so this is this was the answer to the second part i'm uh, moving on to the next question question number 3 the oh oh okay uh okay it says uh, the volume of soup in super soup carton has a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation 9 mL so you will start by saying that x is normally distributed with this mu and here this will be 9 square because you're given the standard deviation tests have shown that 10% of cartons contain less than 440 ml of soup find the value of mu so the probability x is less than 440 that is equal to uh 0.1 okay that is equal to 0.1 One. Okay, so you know when you have this equation, you should immediately be going on to standardizing this. So this is going to be probability z is less than four forty minus mu over the standard deviation, and that is equal to point one. Oh, you have a less than sign here, and this probability is less than 0.5. So you be careful with that. This means you cannot, will not be able to find the phi inverse of this. So you have to make it minus here. So we shall write it as probability z is less than, and you take a minus common from here. Mu minus 440 over 9, and that is equal to 0.1. So this will be now 1 minus phi of mu minus 440 over 9 that is equal to 0.1 so this is phi of mu minus 440 over 9 that is equal to 0.9 so mu minus 440 over 9 that is phi inverse of 0.9 so uh <coughs> who will give me quickly what is phi inverse of 0.9 you can find that through that critical values at the end of the table so we have this equal to 1.282 so let me write it here this uh mu minus 440 that is going to be uh 9 times 1.282 so this mu is going to be 440 plus 9 into 1.282 so what is this mu bachcho 440 plus 9 times 1.282 that is 451.538 451.538 
So correct to three significant figures, this is going to be 452 ml. Okay. So that's a straightforward question on normal distribution. Then it says a retailer orders 150 super soup cartons. Calculate the number of these cartons for which you would expect the volume of soup to be more than 1.8 standard deviations above the mean. More than 1.8 standard deviations above the mean. So I need to find this probability first of all, and then I'll multiply that probability with 150, and then I'll get I'll be getting my required number of cartons. Okay. So let's do this working here. So let's find the probability, which is where X is more than 1.8 standard deviations above the mean. So this is mu plus 1.8 standard deviations, okay? So we have to find this probability first of all. So this would be uh, probability X is more than, now you have your mu but that is 452, okay? 0 0.1, 0 0.538. So let's use that plus 1.8 times the standard deviations. So that is 467.738. This is 467.738. So this, now we need to standardize this. This is probability Z is greater than this <coughs> 467.78 minus 451. Try to use the exact values here, okay? Over nine. So this is minus 451.538 divided by nine. That is nine by five, and that is 1.8. Says so probability Z is more than 1.8. Okay. So this means it has to be one minus phi of 1.8. Please use your table and tell me what do you get what is this phi of 1.8? Hmm? 0 0.9641. 0 0.9. A bit louder, please. 0 0.9. 0 0.9641. 41. Okay. So is that the final answer or this is just phi of 1.8? So this is just five of 1.8. So I have to take the, uh, it out from this, okay. Six, four, one. That is 0 0.0359. So the expected number of cartons would be That would be this uh, 0 0.0359 times 150. So we have that is 5.385. That is going to be approximately five cartons should be expected to have <coughs> a volume more than 1.8 standard deviations above the mean. Okay. So moving to the next question, question number four. Okay, uh, again, as uh, the rule is, you have to try it yourself and then I'll be doing it. Okay, Mrs. Rupal chooses three animals at random from five dogs and two cats. The random variable X is the number of cats chosen, okay? Uh, draw up the probability distribution mm -hmm. table for X, okay? So this should be, uh, I think if we draw a uh, T diagram, the things can be handled easily. So <clears throat> we have dogs and cats, okay? So this is going to be uh, five by seven, and this is going to be two by seven. Yeah. Then you have, can have dog and cat. 
This will be four by six, it will be two by six. And dog and cat. This is going to be five by six. This is going to be one by six. Okay. And since we have to uh, just consider the case where we have um, two cats. Okay. Yes. I think can we have more uh, more than two cats? No, because it's just two cats over here. So now I'm going to make a table out here. Okay, so this is your x. This is the probability x equal to x. She's going to choose three. Um, three, okay, oh, I have to have one more option here, guys. You didn't tell me. Now, she actually is looking for three animals, okay? So this is maybe all three can be dogs. This is three by five. And then this can be a cat over here. So this is going to be two by five. Okay. For this, it can be a dog, it can be a cat. So a dog has already been taken. So this is going to be four by five. And this cat is going to be one by five. And it is quite clearly going to be a dog here. That is going to be five uh, by five. Two by five. Okay. This is going to be five by five. Okay. Hey. Yes, but question one is I am. This is clear. Not doing. Okay, but I'm not doing it. Any question, but so. Acha, ek baat batao. Abhi ek minute hai. Ye wala session khatam hone mein. Could I use the binomial distribution formulas here? Hmm? Yes. बोलो यार। I think so, sir. 